Hunter, and Brandon. Welcome to our class on Friday. It's Newton's Third Wall, and we are working on our day four notes from yesterday. And we're going to open the discussion by drawing our little guy on a bicycle. So do your best to draw it. Lots of forces going on in front of us as you draw this. Be thinking as you're drawing, where are the action-reaction pairs? They always come in pairs. Forces always come in pairs according to Newton. And Newton's third law, as we stated yesterday, for every action that's a force, there's an equal and opposite reaction, another force. All right, lots of action-reaction pairs going on here. So as you're drawing it, come up with at least one. And I bet there's six of us, so I bet we could, all, we could find at least six action-reaction pairs going on. In, in this picture. So, all right, where would one be, Emily, number one? You get the easier part if I call on you first. Where is there two, where is a, for, a force happening? On the pedals. All right, so we have right here the force of the foot, force of the foot on the pedals. And so, Pedal is a D, is it a T? I know it's a D. Force of foot on pedal. And the pair part is very easy to find because all you do is switch these two words and you've got the pair. And it always works that way. Don't tell anyone I told you that. Because you need to think it through. Pedal on the foot. All right. What evidence, Emily, number one, do we have that there is a force on the pedal and the pedal on the foot. Do you see any evidence? The, I don't know, your, your foot is like pressing on it. Right. Um, like, so. Right. Whenever there's a force, there's an acceleration, so we, we see the pedal move that way. And what's the, that's a little harder to find. Can you find it, Emily One? Where is the, the evidence of the pedal on the foot? It's, it's harder to find. So we can see the force of the foot on the pedal because it causes an acceleration downward. But it's harder to see where is the, the action, the Z action, where's the reaction, the pedal on the foot? It's sort of related to me. Remember when I was pushing the table? Like the fact that the bike moves at all? Yeah, well, it doesn't have anything to do with that right at that point. But remember, you're not seeing any motion, much motion. But you can see the reaction of the table on me. So your foot is feeling a pressure from that pedal. That is the action reaction pack. Obviously, your foot is going to overcome the pressure that it's feeling and, and will push the pedal down. But there's a resistance. You'll feel it on your foot. If you're in the wrong gear, you'll feel it a lot. So that's the action-reaction pair. So, all right, what about Emily number two? Would it be the force of the, the pedal onto the wheel? All right, so where is that? Where this? If there was like a little gear. Like yeah, that's there. true. Now so you're saying there's like gears. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> All right, so let's go back here where those little teethy gears are. My, my bike was a little more basic than that, but we'll upgrade it. So go ahead. What, so we're going to say force right here. The force of gears on, what is it, the gears forcing on? What is this, like a chain? Yeah. Yeah. Force of force of gears on chain, so what's the reaction pair? I'm the force of chain on gears. Right. Can you explain the, what you, the evidence you see of the forces? Um, well, the gears on the chain, it moves the chain. Right, you'll see so an acceleration, just, they'll move. And what, what about the other way? The chain on the gears. How do I 
it's not something you can easily see, but it's more like felt because it's going to be a resistance. Yeah, yeah right. It's going to be pushing back on it. It's going to lose because it's going to go, but there's going to be a resistance there. Brian, can you see another place on this picture where there's an action-reaction pair? <clears throat> sitting on the seat and the seat is sustaining his weight. I'm sorry? What? The man is sitting on the seat and the seat yeah. is sustaining his the weight. The force of the butt on the seat <laughs> and the seat and then the other pair is? The seat sustains his weight. Force um, butt on the seat and it always just reverses. So these two t change places for the reaction pair. Force of uh, seat on butt. All right. What evidence, Brian, do we see of that happening? Um, well, seat is sustaining, and, and he's not going through the seat. Right. The seat doesn't like push him up off the bike. And also, like the the seat dimples in somewhat. Sort of, sort of like the tramp. <laughs> So the force of the butt on the seat will cause like a pressure, a dimpling in or a, sort of a molding. And the force of the seat on the butt is you'll just feel the resistance. You won't fall down through. It'll provide you a stability there. All right. Are there any left? What about you, Emily? Three? Um, <clears throat> the force of the tires and All right, that's one of, that's probably one of the most important one, you know. It's going to get harder as we get to you guys, so we've been uh, studying it. Yeah, wait. <laughs> you can find another one. All right, that's probably the most important one that we're looking at for this whole process, although this one's important too, the gears on the chain. But I had drawn it without any gears, so before my first model, this was the most important spot. So, um, Emily, what do we see? What pairs do we see? Uh, the force of the tire on the ground. Right, tire on ground. Force of ground on tire. Yes, you got it. <laughs> and force of ground on tire. So once you get one, you just switch them, and you got the other. All right, evidence, Emily? Um, the ground is pushing up on the tire, I guess. Uh, I guess the wheel kind of bends a little bit. All right, this is our, take a take a really hard look here because this one is why the bike works right there, and the force of the tire on the ground is.